Now the question that we're all asking ourselves right now, is it time up for Kepa? He lost his place to Caballero in our last game against Leicester City and since then reports have come out suggesting that the club are now looking to the market to find a replacement for the goalkeeper. Now it seems like maybe Kepa's personal life may be interfering with his football with reports coming out recently suggesting that a breakup with a long-term girlfriend could have had a big psychological effect on the goalkeeper and actually there are sympathies as well because Kepa is regularly playing in front of a different back line every few games and due to the midfield not really protecting protecting our back four at all times well it means that Kepa gets faced with better strikes on goal in comparison to other goalkeepers. Now Marina was the one to vouch for his signing offering her personal recommendation in regards to signing the player and reports say that Marina was a bit confused by Kepa's admission from the team. Regardless it looks like Lampard doesn't fully trust Kepa he wants to bring in his own goalkeeper at this point in time Nick Pope and Manganan are two goalkeepers being linked and in today's video I'll be speaking about seven replacements for Kepa and these targets are going to range from fantasy options to replacements to competition as well as goalkeepers that are being scouted as well so if you guys did like today's video smash that like button help me get over 2,000 likes and of course, remember to press the bell notification to stay up to date to all the latest Blue Lion CV videos. And boys, at that point, we get straight into things, starting with the first replacement for Kepa, and his name is Unai Simmons. Do we go back to Bilbao? Kepa's replacement, Unai Simmons, is making a name for himself in Spain. He's had a great game against Real Madrid, outplaying Courtois in the same game. And since he's taken on the mantle left by Kepa, it's almost as if Kepa hasn't been missed whatsoever. Now the exciting news is Simmons does have a 50 million release clause and he's got a reputation as one of La Liga's best goalkeepers at this moment in time. And only concern is, is that he's a lifelong Bilbao fan, even saying that winning a trophy with Atleti is better than winning the UCL with any other club. He's ultra competitive, performs in the very big games and the question is, do we return back to Bilbao? Who knows, because reports are suggesting that Bilbao may be interested in signing Kepa again. And when you realize that Simmons has a 50 mil buyout clause, you know, we signed Kepa for big money as well. You could see there potentially being some negotiations and some deals if a deal did go through. Now, I think Simmons is a very, very talented goalkeeper. And if you're asking me, I just get the vibes that he's better than Kepa. You know, even looking at the stats, looking at his performances, looking at the conviction in which he makes his saves, commands his area, commands his books and vocalizes as well. I think he's a very impressive goalkeeper and it could be quite interesting. Do we replace Kepa with him or do we sign both and have both keepers competing for the first team spot? Who knows? We now move on to the second goalkeeper and we turn our attentions back to Spain and we go to Real Madrid. Ariola is next on this list. He's currently Madrid's number two goalkeeper. And could he be tempted if a bid was made for him? I definitely think so. You know, Ariola is a very talented goalkeeper. Let's not forget that he was part of the France national team squad when they won the World Cup all those years back. And it's not the first time that we've been linked with the player. Now, before we signed Kepa, we were actually holding talks with Ariola and his reps. And we were talking about a potential 40 million bid to sign him from Paris in Germain. Now that never happened obviously, Marina turned her attention instead to Kepa, but my question is, would Ariola be the perfect goalkeeper to sign to act as competition for Kepa? Now it's quite hard to sign players like your Addisons or Edisons because there aren't players like that available on the market. So it really comes down to how you're going to strategize and the best solution for me is to have another goalkeeper that's as good as Kepa so both keepers can fight for their spot. Because maybe, just maybe, what if Kepa really excelled due to having that extra pressure behind him? And what if that spurred him on to being a more consistent top class goalkeeper? With Ariola, I feel like he'd be very willing to sign for us. He'd be available at a very affordable price and he might see Kepa as competition that he's better than. We now move on to the next goalkeeper and we turn our attentions to the championship. Now, this player I'm about to speak about is a player that I was told that the club have scouted and looked at that doesn't necessarily mean that a bid is incoming, of course not. You know, it's natural for clubs like us to have massive scouting departments to really scour everywhere across Europe looking for the best potential options. And with how stats are so prevalent in helping clubs assess and decide which players to sign on the market, well, it's not really a surprise when certain players come out as outliers after performing very well statistically. 
And this next goalkeeper I'm about to speak about, his name is Christian Wilson. He's at Blackburn on loan from Brighton. And he's attracted the attention of a lot of clubs in this country due to how high he's performing stats-wise. Really excelling in very crucial areas for goalkeepers. Now he's a big goalkeeper at 6 foot 5. And I think the main reason why Christian Walton is a player that clubs will always assess and look at is due to the fact that he has been through various English league setups throughout the years. He's been part of the national team throughout all age groups. Is he ready for the next level? I'm not too sure you guys, but I put this player down because I find it really interesting that it seems like when it comes to ultimately deciding on what goalkeeper to sign, the statistical elements of the player are really going to be strongly considered. So it's just quite interesting to be honest you guys, but now we move on to the fourth goalkeeper. We move to the Bundesliga, to RB Leipzig to be precise. His name is Gulaski and he's a keeper that's come on leaps and bounds ever since he left Liverpool. Now he's without a doubt one of the Bundesliga's best goalkeepers up alongside Jan Sommer and Manuel Neuer. Last season he was without doubt the best goalkeeper in the Bundesliga. He's continued that same form this season and Leipzig need him because now they have an opportunity to drown him in the Bundesliga. Now the reason why Golaski is really respected in the Bundesliga is due to making a name for himself, making tons of spectacular saves and that's due to the player's great reflexes. Now he has been linked with us before and at 29 years old, experienced, tall, great reflexes and possibly available for a very good price. Could Golaski be the perfect option we need to be competition for Kepa or as an actual replacement? Now I like this player because he's an all-rounder. He's good with the ball at his feet. He has very good handling. He has that conviction, that presence when it comes for attacking aerial balls as well. And stylistically, I feel like he's very similar to your Oblaks, your Courtois, your Petr Jeks, And it's a presence that makes a defense feel even more confident. Now his game against Bayern Munich recently typified the players' credentials, putting in a world-class performance against them. Instead of looking at Werner, could Golaski be the option that we really need? Now we go to Serie A. We go to Lazio, his name is Dracosha, and he's having a very, very impressive season for Lazio. Now he's been making a name for himself over the past few seasons, and at 1 meter 93 centimeters, he really has a massive frame. Now what's really interesting though is that he's part of the same agency as many players at this club. And I'm talking about players like your Mason Mounts, your Billy Gilmores, your Loftus Cheeks. And since this player's won his spot at Lazio, He's only grown more and more, notably making his name saving a last-minute Dybala penalty a few seasons ago. Since that moment, the players only be going up and up, and he's proving right now that he's one of Serie A's leading goalkeepers. Now, at 24 years old, he's still young, and due to his age, the club may feel like having two keepers battling it out could be best. With Ter Stegen, did he automatically become Barca's number one keeper? Would he have been ready if he was placed with that type of pressure? Because I think that's one thing that we don't consider enough at times. There is a pressure playing for a bigger club compared for a smaller team. Strakoyce is pretty unorthodox as a player, but I think that's what makes these goalkeepers even more exciting. He is very good with his feet as well. But what I really like about him is that he really complements Lazio. As Lazio are a team that concede quite a lot of opportunities on the counter-attack. So due to this, they really need a goalkeeper that is adept at making saves in these situations. Now, this is one thing that Kepper has definitely struggled with this season. Whenever players are 1v1 against him, you're feeling 9 times out of 10, Kepper's going to concede a goal. So Rokosha is not afraid to leave his box if he has to. Very fast, very aggressive. And I really feel like he's a player that has to be really taken seriously. And now you guys, in that point, we move on to the final two players. I'm going to be starting with the player that we've actually come up against earlier this season. He plays for Ajax. His name is Onana. And ever since he's left Barcelona, he's been making a name for himself as one of Europe's brightest young goalkeepers. Now, with Onana, he has exceptional passing ability. Now, as a sweeper keeper, it's essential that you're confident with the ball at your feet. And as we've seen with your teams like your Liverpools and your Man Cities with Edison and Allison, when you have a keeper that can start attacks from deep that has accurate distribution from deep areas, it really brings another added dimension to your attack. And how many extra points or goals do City and Liverpool profit from due to the technical abilities of their goalkeeper. With Kepa, this is definitely an area that this team is lacking in. He's regularly playing balls over the top of fullbacks. He's not finding Tammy Abraham up front. But with Onana, 
this is not an issue with the goalkeeper. As I stress, he is a modern day sweeper keeper, comfortable leaving his lines and stepping out of play to play passes wide. It's quite obvious that the defense don't necessarily trust Kepa in his distribution. That's why you don't tend to see too many back passes played back to the keeper. But with Onana, that isn't the case anymore. You'd assume that he'd be available in the market if a nice offer came in for him. Could Onana be that guy? And guys, on that point, we end things with the final player for today's video. This is the fantasy option, and his name is All Black. Now, this really is the very definition of a fantasy player. Let's have some fun with this, you guys. Now, technically, All Black does have a release clause. So that does mean that if any club was to meet that, that means you skip the negotiation process with Atleti and you can speak directly to the player in regards to wages, clauses, and all that good contract stuff. Now at 27 years old and in his prime, could Oblak have doubts that Atleti are gonna win things in the long term? With the investment that Barca and Madrid are showing, and with how a lot of Atleti signings tend to struggle when they sign for him, well, it does make it hard to reach that new level when most of the players you're signing aren't succeeding. Could we tempt the player with the projects on offer, with money, with London, could the player be tempted if we were really desperate to sign him? Who knows? But one thing we do know is that Oblak Black is without doubt one of the greatest goalkeepers in world football right now. The very definition of world class. Every big serious club has a serious goalkeeper at the back. Everyone. We've spoken about how we want world class and top class options to come at the club to supplement the great young players we have. Oblak Black could be a sign of things to come if this was the case. And come on. If you're a striker, you're one-on-one -on -one against O Black, you're feeling the pressure immediately. The greatest goalkeepers, the very best ones, they know how to bring the pressure against opposition players. I'd love to see it if it could happen, but we know it's a fantasy for a reason, you guys. Now, that's going to bring an end to today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. In the comment section below, give me your thoughts and opinions on what you took from the video. What targets would you like to see replacing Kepa? What do you think is the best course of action we need to take in regards to the player's future? I want to read all your thoughts and opinions, you guys. And on that point, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things the hell moving. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'm the EFC, this is Blue Lines CV, and I'm about to get a haircut right now, so I'm feeling pretty good, you guys. I'll see you in a bit.